So let's look at how to avoid inter-symbol interference in digital communication systems. We're going to look at a result called the Nyquist theorem. Now this is not the most well-known Nyquist theorem that relates to sampling of continuous time signals, but it is another theorem due to Nyquist that talks about the maximum rate of sending data in a digital communication system. And so let's try to understand that. So here's a communication system with a communication channel. And we're representing this here by H subscript C. And this represents the impulse response of that channel. And in an inter-symbol interference situation, that channel spreads out the signal in time, uh, causing inter-symbol interference. And for example, that might be multiple paths in a mobile communication system where there's a direct path, line of sight perhaps, and then there are reflected paths which have bounced off buildings and they come in with a delay. So that is a spreading out of the signal that was sent. Now, you also have ability to put a filter in your transmitter and a filter in your receiver. So the design task is to design these two filters. You don't get a choice on the channel. The channel comes from nature and physics, uh, but you have a choice of the transmit filter and the receive filter. And we'd like to design those in order to avoid the inter-symbol interference. So the channel has spread out the signal and the task of these two filters is to reverse that and to compress the signal. Let's see if we can do that. And Nyquist gives us a theorem that says when we can do it and how fast we can send data while achieving that zero inter-symbol interference condition. So let's look at it here. So now let's uh, first of all uh, write an expression for the three filters all in one expression. So this is a linear system. So this is a convolution. Each filter is a, uh, doing convolution, of course. So the convolution of successive filters is an one overall filter, which can be written as the convolution of the three impulse responses. So this is just a standard result from signals and systems. So we're going to look at this with this variable xt here. And we can write the output signal in this way in discrete time. So after it's been sampled at the output, we can write the equation like this. So the inputs are these i subscript k, which are plus and minus one. So we're looking at the binary digital case. Now the output yk at the time k, the discrete time k, equals the input data at time k, which is being multiplied by the sampled version of this overall convolved filter, which is the transmit channel and receive filters all con convolved. Uh, so the x0 is the 0th tap from that filter. And then it's there's a summation term from all the other components from that overall filter. Uh, each one multiplied by the data that was sent at that corresponding time, uh, plus the noise, of course. So there's noise coming in here. The W goes through the filter HR and comes out here as VK after it's sampled discreetly here. So let's just look at this uh, here. I'm not going to derive it all here, but if we just to make sure it makes sense to us, we start with n equals zero. So this gives data at time zero for the first element of this summation. Um, and that's multiplied by the overall filter at k. After a period of time k, how much will that input from the start from time zero, when n equals zero, how much will that still be contributing to the received value? And then for n equals one, it's the first data at i1, and how much that is still contributing, and then two, it's the second data, and how much that is still contributing, and so on. Because as we said, the channel is smoothing out the data in, in time because of reflected paths and delays and so on. Uh, the same thing holds, of course, for DSL lines and coaxial cable lines where not all the frequencies uh, propagate with the same gain and same attenuation. That also causes a spreading out of the signal in time. So it's not just mobile communications. So here's the equation here. Again, we're not going to derive it all, but I think hopefully you can see that it makes sense. There's the input at time k, the data at time k, plus whatever is left over and was spread out from the previous times. 
Now, if you've got a keen eye, you'll notice this goes to infinity, which means that it's not just the previous times, but in this equation, it's a very general version, and it's actually allowing for future times as well. And that might seem a little counterintuitive, because everything in the world is causal, um, but actually uh, it accounts for the fact that there is a delay in the system, an end-to-end -end delay. You can't use these two filters here, which are linear filters, they can't hope to squash back the waveform back in time, because this one spread it out in time, and with these two we're asking them to operate in a way that compresses it back in time, uh, we can't expect these two to compress it into negative time. So they have to compress by doing some operations that mean that in future it will be compressed in time. And that's simply an end-to-end -end delay. And that's, of course, the case in any communication system. There's always an end-to-end -end delay. So that's why that infinity is there. Uh, for the full details, uh, you can check out the um, notes uh, in, on the web page uh, that you'll find in the description below this video. But this is the overall equation. Now, what's the aim for zero ISI, to avoid the ISI? Because this is the inter-symbol interference. This is the components from the other data symbols acting on the symbol at time k, the measurement at time k, interfering with the data at time k. That's inter-symbol interference. We'd like this to disappear. See if we can totally eliminate it by designing these two filters. Well, so what is that aim? Well, the aim here, straight, you can see it from this math, we want, we've got choice over these filters, they contribute to x, so we would like all of these values of x in this summation to equal zero and only have this value non-zero. So here's our aim. We want xn to be designed, we're designing these two filters such that xn equals some value, which we're happy about as a gain at that time, when n equals zero, but we want it to equal zero for all other values of n, when n equals anything other than zero. So that's our aim. And here we have this Nyquist theorem. So Nyquist has a theorem that is in terms of the, the Fourier transform of x. So this is a very interesting theorem. Now, we'll see that it, it does relate actually to the Nyquist sampling theorem, uh, but um, not particularly directly. But I think intuitively you can think that it probably the two things are related. The, the data rate that you can send data might be related to the sampling rate of sampling continuous time signals. Um, in many ways, there this is, this is talking about how fast you can send digital data, and the more well-known Nyquist sampling theorem is related to how you have to sample for a continuous signal. So here we're looking at dis dis uh, discrete signals, which are digital. Okay, so here's the result, and it uh, looks an interesting result, and I just want to try to help us to understand it. So here's the Fourier transform of X, and it, he, Nyquist has a result that says, if you take that Fourier transform and shift it by M divided by capital T, then you sum up all of those shifts over all m from minus infinity to infinity, the summation of that has to equal capital T for all values of f. I think when you look at this, sometimes this is often confusing. People scratch their heads. What, what on earth does this mean? How do we interpret this? So let's try to understand it now. So let's look at the, an element of this summation. Let's look at the, the element when m equals zero. So when m equals zero here, we just have the Fourier transform of x. So let's consider a general case for that Fourier transform. So here we have a, a band limited signal, um, and this is, uh, or an impulse response, so sorry, which is band limited in the frequency domain between minus w and w. This is the Fourier transform of this overall function. Just remind ourselves the task here, we can't control the impulse response of the channel that's given to us by nature. We can control the transmit filter and the receive filter. Now, if we can design those so that the overall filter has this, this uh, frequency response, then uh, that's something we'd like to do because that means we can transmit it within a certain bandwidth and that's great for communications because we'll be given an amount of bandwidth over which to send our signal. So this is the type of waveform we're looking for in our, ch in our challenge of designing the transmit and the receive filters. What does this mean down here? So now we've got, we've got the zeroth element of this summation already plotted here. This is when m equals zero. 
So what happens when m equals 1? Let's look at the first element when m equals 1. Well, this is the Fourier transform shifted to by 1 divided by capital T. And when m equals minus 1, it's the shift in the other direction. So when m equals 1, it's a shift to the right by 1 on t. When m equals minus 1, it's a shift to the left. So let me draw that one example of that here. So here's the xf, and here's the element from this summation, which is shifted to the right by 1 on t. And here's the element that is shifted to the left by 1 on t. And of course, they keep going on uh, dot, 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 because all of the other elements of this summation from minus infinity to infinity, I just can't draw them all on this page here. But this is the scenario for the case, for one for a particular case, where 1 divided by t is bigger than w. Okay, so hopefully you can see that here. This is for the case where uh, um, 1 divided by t is bigger Bigger, sorry, is bigger than 2w. So this is the case where 1 divided by t is bigger than 2w. So we've got 1 divided by t bigger than 2w. And so this is the case drawn here. Now in this case, let's ask ourselves, can we satisfy this equation down here? Well, what does this equation say? It says that this summation has to equal a constant. It has to equal capital T, but, but capital T is a constant for all values of f. So for this uh, uh, function here, which is the summation of all of these in this case, we are not able to achieve this condition because the value here is different from the value here at this frequency, different from the value of this frequency. At this frequency, it equals zero. And then at this frequency, it doesn't equal zero and so on. So I think you can see that when 1 on t is bigger than 2w, you are not able to satisfy this Nyquist theorem. And that means that we cannot avoid intersymbol interference in this case. So let's think a little more practically about that. What does that mean? That means when you're trying to send your data too fast, you cannot avoid intersymbol interference. This is the, the first uh, intuitive result from the Nyquist zero ISI theorem. So let's look at some other examples. Let's look at the special case when one divided by t equals w, uh, equals 2w. Okay, so this is this case here. So this is when one divided by t equals 2w. Okay, now in that case, let's look and see. Now again, the way I've drawn it here, where each one of these elements is one of the elements of this summation and the overall function is the overall function that I've drawn and it has to equal the same value for all values of frequency. And the way I've drawn it here, it does not do that. However, there is a special shape that would achieve that. So instead of this shape that I've drawn here, if you could design your transmit filter and your receive filter so that the overall shape was a square, then I think you can see that if these shapes were replaced by a square, then when they added up, they would be absolutely flat across all the values of frequency and they would be exactly the same because they can, each one of these uh, shapes is contained between minus w and w and then between w and 2w. And if they were a square, I think you can see that they're going to sit exactly next to each other totally next to each other with the same height across if it was exactly a square and then you would be able to satisfy this condition. So the intuitive result here tells us that if we want to send one on t, that's the rate of sending data, if we want to send the data at exactly 2w, then we can achieve zero ISI if we use filters which mean that the overall filter is a square in the frequency domain, which means inverse Fourier transform, it means it has to have a sync function in the time domain. So the impulse response, if the impulse response of the overall filter was a sync function, then in the frequency domain it would be a square, then you could achieve the Nyquist zero ISI theorem and you could it and that would give you no ISI you would be completely avoiding the intersymbol interference and if you try to send any faster we know that you'd have these gaps and so you can't do it 
So this tells us the fastest speed that we can send data without getting into symbol interference. Okay, just finally then, what about uh, if we send slower? So if we allow ourselves to send slower, so one on T is less than two W, in that situation, then we have more flexibility. So in that situation, we can have a pic we have a picture like this where there are overlapping, the elements of this summation are overlapping in the frequency domain. And then what we need to make sure is that the component of uh, this shape here, when it adds to the shape that's from the uh, shifted one, if they add up to the same value as the uh, as it does in the main part of the band, then you would also satisfy the condition that this summation has to be constant and it would be a flat across here. So the part that's going down, if the part that's going down is uh, accounted for by the part that's going up of the neighbor, then the summation will remain the same. And there's lots of different way, uh, sh uh, um, frequency response shapes for which that will be true. Uh, one of them would be the raised cosine filters, and they're also very popular filters. They are essentially uh, a sync function with a roll-off factor. So if you're interested in this, there's other videos on the channel that talk about pulse shaping, uh, and you'll find details about that in the description below this video. So when you send slower, you have more choice over the shape of your overall response, which means you have more choice about the transmit filter and the receive filter design. And just one final thing to say uh, is that you can look at uh, particular cases with white Gaussian noise uh, and you can uh, look at the maximizing the signal to noise ratio and you can see from this analysis you'll be able to see that the transmit filter in that case should be matched to the receive filter and that's where you get the concept of matched filtering from. Uh, and uh, for more information on that there's other uh, description, uh, other videos where you'll find in the description below this video. So hopefully this has given you more insight into avoiding intersimple interference and the fact that there's more than one Nyquist theorem. There's the sampling theorem for sampling continuous time waveforms, but there's also the zero ISI theorem for sending digital waveforms. So if you found it useful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the, video, uh, the channel for more videos and of course check out the web page in the description below where you'll find a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.